Hi everyone, I'm Brandy. I'm Hunter Proof Quilter and this is my quilting corner. It's a little bit of a disaster today. Welcome everyone. Let's see who joined us today. Hi Sandra, Beverly, Mona, Andrea. Hi Jean. Um, so this week I managed to actually get into the sewing room this week. Um, it's been a crazy week and today I was actually at quilt shops today. So um, I was doing some of my um, retail liaison stuff, which um, I'm learning so much. Hi, Steelers fan. Um, I'm learning so much about being a retail liaison for my quilt guild. Um, but I went to go pick up a donation at um, in Blanchard, Oklahoma, which is about 45 minutes away from where I live. So I had a doctor's appointment at my spine doctor. and. Um, I ran on over there after we were done. It's a little chilly and rainy here, so it was a it was a nice day for a drive. I'm not a super fan of driving in the rain, but it wasn't that bad. Um, hopped on over there. They donated a great full complete quilt kit for our guild um, for our retreat that's next month. Um, so that was awesome. But there was a lot of paperwork that that I was unaware of like the 501c3 and the tax exemption and setting up an account for our guild um, at me as their representative in there so there's all kinds of things involved in that and i'm really new to this so i am learning so much um but while i was there um hi shirley um while i was there she has a whole section of um, AccuQuilt dies, and there she had them 25 to 50 percent off. So I was going through those. Um, I felt kind of felt inclined that she had donated this gift to the guild that I should at least do some shopping. <laughs> so um, I actually bought two things while I was there. Um, I, if you guys remember last week, I was having some serious bobbin issues, and I was breaking my bobbins. Um, they're old and they're plastic and uh so we bought some i bought some pre-wound bobbins um so i'm gonna try those out um and then while i was there i got a phone call from another quilt shop because i had participated in the shop hop and i had won um a charm pack and so this is the little charm pack i won and so i swung by there and picked up the charm pack and actually, as as it would be, one of my employees from where I work, she's the one who called me. She works at the quilt shop on her off days. It's a um, that way, you know, she gets the discount for her fabric. And she told me basically her check goes to them, which is great. Um, that's the way to do it. I'm just saying. Um, so she was like, hi, this is so and so. And I was like, hi. She's like, well, you won a prize for the show pop. And I was like, oh. You know, so I bet she saw my name and went, hey, I know her. That's my boss. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, so this is the, the fabric I got. And it's just, it's just some solids, but there's some really nice solids in here. Um, what was it called? Um, Studio E Fabrics. So um, it's just some nice little solids, just a charm pack. Um, it's got some grays and I like my grays and it's got some blues. Oh, look at the turquoise. Peaty, peaty, peaty. Um, some greens and it's like mustard yellow and I'm getting things everywhere. So I ran and picked that up afterwards. Um, I'm going to try and put that back in there. I don't want to put it there either. So back to the dyes that they were. Hi, Gladys. How are you? So um, she had this aisle of 25 to 50% off. And I found this dye. It's called uh, Grapes of Wrath. Is this not the cutest thing? So here are the leaves and then the, the little circles for the grapes. Um, it's, it was $22. Um, and so this is the quilt they have on the back. And I actually have the other two dyes that. Uh, to make this quilt. Is that not cute? And then my husband is currently creating. Hi, June. Hi, Teresa Louise. How are you? 
It's been a minute since I've seen you. Hi, Kim. So my husband is currently creating his camping quilt and he wants certain leaves. Hi, Laura. He wants certain leaves and he wants like the deer head on it and he wants some different animals on it along with um, real tree and some other uh, stuff. He, I don't think he, I think he wants the hunter star, which I have that die as the main block. And then he wants some applique shapes throughout his quilt. And so I figured this leaves, these leaves could double for um, some of the leaves he wants because he wants um, some maple leaves and some other leaves on there. I mean, he's designing a whole quilt. Um, but I, I really like it. And who doesn't need little circles? I, I can always use little circles. And I was thinking the leaves could be this fabric. I have a whole bunch more of this fabric here. This currently, though, are the strips I cut for the binding for this. So um, that's, but I thought that the leaves would be great for this. Now I haven't decided about my grapes yet. I've got tons of stuff over there and I have some purple, I have lots of purple Tula pink fabric, but you know, so anyway, that's the die I got, $22, can't go wrong. So as for what I have actually done this week, my strips, I still got to, I got to bind that sucker. First, I got to trim it. And I don't think my cutting surface is um, big enough for that. So I got three blocks done of my three block, the three big blocks done of my um, turtle, um, deep dive turtle. Um, now all I have are just the little tiny blocks. So this one is this part right here. It's a little, it's just a little tiny purple. And I was like, what in the world is that? And then I had to look at the pattern and I was like, okay, okay, I get it. And then I got the other big ocean pieces. I know AccuQuilt is awesome. I love my AccuQuilt. I'm having so much fun with it. And so I got the three big pieces done. And so now all I have, well, I have a couple other mid-sized pieces. These are my mid-sized pieces I have to do. And then all I have left are all the little ones um, to do. So that's that. So then my AccuQuilt pattern that I made with my flying geese I managed to get I got four blocks done so this is one of the blocks and I actually I'm really proud of this one because I actually managed to spin my center here I tried on the other three to do that and couldn't manage it but I managed to spin my center on this one this bad boy is flat. So, um, yeah, managed to spin my center on that one. So, that's one. And then there's one of the other ones. I didn't quite get the center spun on this one, but it's still flat. I got, I got it, I got it pretty flat. I'm really proud of how I've managed to get almost all of them to center up and I haven't lost a single point. Hi, Nancy. I haven't lost a single point on any of these. Um, and that's because the AccuQuilt cuts so perfect. And as long as you stay on your quarter inch, you're not going to lose your corners. Um, so that's the other one. And then, of course, you guys saw me have to take the seat, take I sewed this one wrong last week, but this is the one we were working on last week. And I didn't even try to spin this one in the center, um, but I did start spinning them on the other ones. So. so, yeah, we got four of those blocks done. So we actually managed to get some stuff done in here this week. And um, I am going to be away from my sewing machine for two weeks because I fly out Monday for Mexico and I'm going to be on a boat for 10 days. 
Um, and it's just going to be hand, it's going to be um, cross stitch is what it's going to be. Um, so cross stitch it'll be, I've got a pattern all picked out. It's just a small one. I try not to do anything majorly big. Um, thank you guys. Um, when I travel because I, I don't want too much fabric um, and I don't want to get in too intense of a design while I'm traveling. So I just got a little, I think it's this big. It's a real small design. Um, so, and if I can, I'm going to shoot some video. And of course, you guys will see lots of underwater videos because we're swimming with the giant manta rays. So I'm a little nervous about that. But um, it should be good. It should be good. I'm sure that it'll eat me. <laughs> No, they're more interested in knowing um, what's visiting them than food. They get plenty of food in the ocean. They don't need to eat me. That's for sure. So um, we talked um, last week that I was trying new thread weights. So I'm really happy doing this 60, 80 weight threads. Um, I think it, it, now I haven't tried it with everything. Okay, um, I will be trying it with some applique stuff um, here soon, but I really like the way it stitches and um, I haven't had any trouble with my machine and I'm, I don't even think I have name brand thread in my machine. I do have some 80 weight Wonderfill, but I haven't even opened it yet. Um, and what I got off Amazon is what I'm using. What's in my um yeah it's just some regular embroidery thread 60 weight it's not even a and i haven't had any problems so um i know that some machines get finicky about stuff like there are certain threads that are the cheaper variety that my machine just doesn't like um but I haven't had any shredding. I haven't had any um, any of those kind of issues. So that's good. I did try out my new Acorn pressing pin. I, I do like it. Um, I, I did like it. I, I, I do like it. So it's another addiction I got. Urgh, like I need another addiction. <laughs> Who needs another thing? The um the light worked okay. Um, it's awful centered. Um, so I really have to make sure the piece I'm looking through while I'm doing the um FPP has to be really right there. Um, but I could always put another light under there. But other than that, the mat worked great, the light worked good. So all in all, I had a good week sewing wise. I did get the final word that I am going back to my normal schedule, my normal overnight schedule on the Monday following when I get back from vacation. But I'm going to keep this live. Um, I'm just going to get up early to do it. Instead of doing it before I go to bed on Mondays, we're going to go ahead and keep Wednesday. And I'm just going to get up earlier and do it. I mean, um, it's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> I used to get up early to go running when running was something I did on Tuesdays and I had to be there by six. So this won't be a problem. So we won't be changing the Wednesday live. I'm just going to get my hiney out of bed early so that we can do it. Now, I can't guarantee how I will look when I get on live, but <laughs> I could be in my pajamas, but we won't have our Wednesday live. Um, so. And we will probably be drinking coffee. For those of you that are going to bed, please ignore that I'm drinking coffee. Um, but so those are the updates. Let's see. Do I have any other updates? I don't think I do. I think that's all the other updates. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we've been. Thanks for, for all the safe travels and stuff, guys. Yeah, we've been we've been getting ready. It'll be the longest vacation I've ever taken. I have never taken two weeks off from work. Um, 
So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Hi, Kelly. Um, is hi everyone. Is YouTube strange for anyone else? I'm on the website, and now when I watch a video, I still have a recommended feed underneath it. Hmm. I don't know. I was on earlier watching Sewing Machines Plus in their surgery event because I still have that serger. I have not even tried to use oh that's another update i have so <clears throat> not the serger so a friend of mine has been watching for a featherweight for me and what he thought was a featherweight i had given him permission to uh he does um online auctions and i had given him permission to get one up to two hundred dollars if he found what i was looking for um now he did find a sewing machine. It was not a featherweight, but it's a very nice, and I believe it's a 201, um, and it is really nice. Um, and it is still in my car. I really probably should get that out of the car, but <laughs> um, it's really nice. Um, it's in an oval um, hard case um, on a wooden base. It's really beautiful and it's got all that. It's it's really pretty. Um, it's still not the featherweight that I want, but it's still 201s are still pretty. So I do have that and it's in the car. And he actually had two other ones that were not as nice as the one that I got um, that he's selling. And I need to put on my page to see if anybody local wants to buy that. Hi, Marie. How are you? Oh, no worries. Thank you for stopping in. I appreciate you. Um, so I will at some point post those pictures um, for him. See if I can get anybody to pick those up for him because I don't need another sewing machine. I probably don't need the one that I got. Um, I really would like an embroidery machine, but that's a whole nother story. Um, so let's see. So I um, so today we're going to work on um, my blocks again. My AccuQuilt blocks. Um, I'm not advanced enough with the legit kits to do that while I'm talking, so we're gonna go with <laughs> we're gonna go with this because um, even this I mess up and um, pulling stitches out of newsprint is never fun. <laughs> Um, I love that they that the AccuQuilt cuts all the dog ears off because it is so easy to line up stuff. Oh my goodness. Um, it is just the bestest. So we are just going to line up the sides that we messed up on during the last live because we um, forgot that we had these extra directional pieces that were our little mini pinwheel. And had to pull those stitches out. That was not fun. That was not fun at all. So we're going to go ahead and set these up so that I can just um, chain piece. Because we love to chain piece. Um, the problem with being so um, scrappy with this sometimes when i take the pieces off the design board um, i really have to pay attention because the next one underneath may look like it's part of the one that we're working on and, and, and it's not so i really have to be careful and pay attention to what i'm picking up and because they've cut off the dog ears my machine doesn't try to eat it eat the material as much as when the dog ears are there As long as we sew it right, we'll be okay. So what is everybody else working on? Anybody got any fun projects going on right now? Find my pressure foot here. Okay, the dryer is done. <laughs> gotta go see you around. I have got to do laundry too. I have not even I need to do laundry still. Um and I'm only really going to have one day to pack because I am like the worst person to get ready for vacation. I'm like the last minute packer. 
I mean, it's horrible. It really is. Luckily for me, um, the heavy pack, the heavy deals with all of our scuba gear. He just pulls it out and says, here, this is what you need to pack or else I'd be in trouble. I really would. Uh, I just need to pack my clothes and my toiletries. And then he brings out my gear and says, okay, this is what you need to pack in your scuba bag. And that's what I pack. Or else I'd be in real trouble. Because I'm telling you, I am the last. I said that about it, not eating my fabric. And then what do I do? I cause it to eat my fabric. Pinwheels, pinwheels, and more pinwheels. Clean size quilt full of pinwheels. Oh, that's awesome. I bet you that's gorgeous. Um, I just said this thing doesn't eat my fabric. And then what did I do? Cause it to eat my fabric. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, it's because I was chit-chatting. I wasn't paying attention. I tell you. It isn't a lie until we bring out the divorce lawyer. So, I'm a little sad that I'm going back to overnights, but then again, there are some things about the overnight shift that work really well for me, and that there are, I haven't been able to make it to any of my guild meetings because. Um, the way they pillow shams so i put in my first zippers on um we have these body pillows speaking of pillow shams um my husband's been bugging me about putting some pillows in so the pillow will quit sliding out from inside the pillow case and while he was camping i installed my first zippers that was a uh, I practiced, I practiced on some pillowcases that we don't use. Then I put, then I installed the zipper in my pillowcase first. By the time I got mine done, I figured out what I was doing wrong and his was perfect. I'm making log cabin blocks. Those are, you know, that's, I've never made any log cabin blocks and that's kind of on my like to-do list. I would like to make some log cabin blocks. That would be really great. Uh, I am trying to think of how to say your name. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, Martiaz. Man, I am terrible about pronouncing names. Can somebody phonetically say her name for me? Somebody call me and tell me how to say her name. Try and say my last name if it makes you feel any better. Call her Marty for short. I'm going to have to hear somebody say her name because I don't want to keep messing it up. I am terrible with pronunciation. I am terrible. I have my own language. Just ask my friends. I can't even order a meal without saying shrimp wrong. Marita. Mar <laughs> Stop sewing, Brandy. <laughs> Let's pay attention to what we're doing. Maritaza. Did I, I still said that wrong, didn't I? I promise you that my name does not mean I drink. It is just a play on my name. This is just soda, I promise. My goodness. I bet it's a beautiful name if I hear it. Ritz like cracker, like the cracker. Maritza. Maritza. Did I get closer? Mm. 
Okay, at least I got closer. Good grief. I messed up the poor woman's name forever. I don't want to do that. I apologize for my lack of pronunciation. I'm horrible. I'm a horrible, horrible person. Ugh. Okay. I have to write that down myself so I remember that. Okay. Did we turn on my iron? Uh, it feels like it. <laughs> okay. So. Anyways. So back to. Um, going back to this horrible overnight schedule. There are some good things. There are some good things about going to overnight. I Like I said. I haven't made it to any of my guild meetings. Because. They happen right about the time I need to go to bed so that I can get up at three o'clock in the morning to go to my day, to the day shift that I was doing for this temporary assignment. Um, so when my boss messaged me that he needed me back to my um, normal job, uh, sometimes our tongues and brains don't connect. That has been my life story. Um, my husband tried, my husband said one time that it was, um, that I was getting old. It was, what did he call it? My, my gray hair speaking or something. I don't remember what he said. And I said, no, I've been that way my whole life. They got nothing to do with the gray. I haven't colored my hair in a while. And he saw it the other day and he said, I really like your hair like that. And I said, what? Freaky with gray? <laughs> and he said, it looks really neat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I have um, colored it <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure the whole thing is gray I started going gray really young so um, I just I haven't really I've just been lazy and I, I dye my own hair so I haven't um, I just haven't gotten around to doing it and so it's grown out Quite a bit and you can't tell from here it just looks blonde but all this is gray and it's all streaky with red because my natural color is a is a is red so but it's a lighter red than what i dye it <clears throat> so i've got like these gray and strawberry blondish streaks going through my hair he thinks it's really cool i haven't decided if i liked it yet or not so I'm still on the fence about whether I'm actually going to dye it or I'm going to let it grow out. I don't know yet. What am I looking for? Oh, <clears throat> my gray pieces. <coughs> so we'll we'll see. Hi, Deborah. How are you? So uh, I don't know. It's the first time he's mentioned anything about the gray, but of course it's the longest. Uh, it's the longest I've gone without coloring it. And I had it up in a ponytail just like this when he saw it. And he noticed it was all streaky. And I mean, it's not, it's not silver gray. I would like to have that silver or that white. That would be great. But um, yeah, that's not what I'm getting. I just got the plain old gray. It is what it is. So we'll see. I have, like I said, I haven't decided if I'm going to color it. Um, I stopped my hair color subscription a while back to save money, but I still have two boxes of the subscription hair dye <clears throat> before I cut off the subscription. So I still have about six months worth of dye that I've got. <clears throat> so I could do my hair. I'm just, like I said, and just being lazy and haven't done it. I could be sewing instead of dyeing my hair. So, you know, priorities. 
I gave up dyeing my hair about eight years ago, and mine is silvery white. Well, that's awesome, Deborah. See, now I wish mine was like coming in silvery white, but I don't. I don't think it is. <laughs> now, my mom, she had some really pretty gray hair. Um, I think hers was kind of silvery. It was really pretty, and she let it grow really long. And she had ringlets and stuff. For me to get ringlets. I have to curl it. Although the gray has put more body in my hair than it ever had my entire life. Because my hair used to be extremely, extremely straight. And since I started getting gray hair, it has truly gotten some body. So um, it is a, so I can be thankful for that for the gray hair. That at least gave me some, some body, man. And curling it, I curled it this morning, although you can't tell that I curled it this morning because uh, it's already fallen out. So curls don't still don't stay. Mine isn't all over yet. Have a wide swipe. My hairdresser loves it. Oh, um, mine is mainly. Well, I thought it was only at my temples until I let it grow out. <laughs> um, apparently, it's more all over than I thought. I probably won't dye it before we go on vacation. So uh, there's no point in dyeing it before we go on vacation. I'm going to be on a boat, and my hair is going to be wet most of the time. And so. Um, Yeah. Nobody cares on the boat. I mean, we're gonna all, we're all gonna have crazy hair most of the days, anyways, from being in and out of the ocean. I have um, special leave-in conditioner to help it from getting too ratty. Your Kim says that hers is, she's a natural redhead and hers is turning white, no gray. See, Nancy says she's all white. See, I think white is just so beautiful. I would like white or silver. The, the weird gray that's kind of in the middle, I, I don't know that I like that for me. Um, I don't know. We'll just have to see. I don't know. If I let it grow out, we'll see. I think right now it's still kind of stripey. So. And I don't know how long it'll be stripey. Um, my sides are pretty solid gray, but up through here we're stripey. But it's the first time my husband wasn't saying, oh, you're getting old. Look at all that gray. He was like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. That's really cool. So. <clears throat> and then I was like, yeah, I noticed it the other day. I was like, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet. No, my mom wasn't wasn't white headed she had um more of, she had a really pretty silver but my dad is white his hair was all, all white um but i don't know that i can go by either one of them because they both have curly hair and somehow this girl turned out with straight hair not sure where that gene came from I've always been really, really envious of my family because my mom had all these curls and my sisters were born with curls. And then uh, my dad, he didn't have curls, but he had he had waves. He had really nice waves. And then here I was with such fine, straight hair that I couldn't even keep barrettes in it most of my um, any of my childhood. All the pictures of me when I was younger, 
my hair isn't done because you couldn't keep barrettes and rubber bands in my hair. Um, they would just slide right back out. Put these back where they belong so that we don't lose track of where we're at. Uh, here. Goes here. Okay. So we're on the pink polka dot. <clears throat> And hubby says when we get back, he will he will um, move into the guest room. So, fingers crossed. Um, my hubby has been silver since we were, since we met forty four years ago. Wow. Um, <clears throat> now mine. Um, shortly after we got together, started getting like gray right in here. I don't know, probably right in his 40s. <clears throat> Hi, Shelly. He started getting like just a little bit of gray right here. And now his whole beard is silver and he's just got like this little bit of, it's not really black, but it's not really gray anymore. Just a little stripe. So he's got like all silver. And of course he grows his pretty long. I think his goatee's probably about down to here. It's all silver except for like this little bit of patch that's very little. It's almost gone now. <laughs> but he still has quite a bit of color still left in his hair. Although that's speckled with silver. But yeah, his beard, almost completely silver now. I keep my hair short so it doesn't kink up. <clears throat> Have I ever had shorter hair? So um, when I was younger, I've had shorter hair a couple times. Um, and um, I, that was one time I told her that I wanted to take a couple inches off. Uh, I wanted to take about, I think I said I wanted to take seven inches off. And I had hair down to my high knee and she cut it off up to here. Um, apparently she didn't know what seven inches was. Um, the shoulder length is probably the shortest I've gone in my adult life. But in sixth grade, um, my hair was, I had a boy haircut. But I haven't really been any shorter now. I don't know why, because I always put my hair up. So it's not like you can see the length of my hair. Because um, at work, I wear it up in a bun. Um, I keep it in a ponytail most days. So um, I don't know. I've always kind of kept the length, although it's thinning. It's my hair is thinning really badly, um, and I know part of that is menopause, which started a couple of years ago, and um, my thyroid quit working about the year before that. And I didn't have the thickest hair to begin with. My hair was like yours. Now I wear it almost shoulder length and it has some curl. Ah, Deborah says that she was five. She looked like Shirley Temple. See, people with curls just, I love curls. I just have no curls. And I, but I think people with <clears throat> different types of hair are always envious of the people that have the opposite of what they have. Like my sister has curls and she's always envied my straight hair. So um, I think sometimes we are we want what we don't have. <laughs> I think it kind of works out that way. But um, yeah, my hair is really really thinning. I really need to go get a haircut. Um, I probably should do that before the trip, but I don't know how I'm going to get in to get a haircut before we go. Um, it could use the ends are getting pretty bad. I probably should get those cut off. That'll shorten it quite a bit. 
<laughs> your girls have straight hair. I don't know why this tip really wants to be a pain right now. Get under there. There we go. And I even got my nails done for my trip. So I went in, oops, I went in and my, my, my nail, my nail lady said, uh, what are we doing? I said, well, I don't really have anything picked out. She said, um, can I pick the design? I was like, go for it. So we got, we got all palm trees here. And then this one's just the little ocean waves. I was like, she's like, are you okay with orange? I'm like, whatever, go wild. You, <laughs> dealer's choice, you pick. She never does a bad job, so every once in a while, I let her choose what she does. I always call these, right before we go on vacation, my vacation nails. And I usually have them longer, but because I will be working with my dive gear, I wanted them much shorter than usual. Although I probably should have gone a little bit shorter. Um, so my nails are under there, but um, it's an acrylic, it's acrylic over them because my nails are weak. Yeah, they they my nail. I've never had strong nails in my entire life. Bad nails, bad teeth, all my life. Bad hair. I think we got a theme going on here. Weak hair, weak nails. We got a theme going on. And I was I was having a cal not a, a vitamin D deficiency. I probably still do because even though now that I'm on now that I've been on days starting I started getting gel now and they don't split. Well, that's good. Um, they've got some really good products out there so that you can put some gel on top of them and stuff. So it helps them. Um, but my job when it, when I'm not on my um, assignment, um, Some of the equipment I deal with can be really rough on my hands. And I've broken these nails with acrylics on them. I can't even imagine what I'd do <clears throat> if uh, I didn't have acrylics on there. Until I retired, I couldn't, I couldn't keep nails. Deborah, that's where I work. I know I don't talk about it a whole lot about where I work, but because a lot of people say a lots of bad things about them. So I, I'm not real. I'm a proud, I'm a proud postal worker, but I am. Um, yes, that's where I work. So keeping nails is really, really hard. And uh, I actually work at a plant. So it's even harder. Um, because even though I'm in management, <clears throat> we are extremely short staffed. And so I still do a lot of work. You thought I was a nurse? A lot of people think so because I um, because of my shifts. But plants are 24 7. And so that's why I work um, overnight. Um, we get the mail together so that you guys get your mail in the morning. We get it ready and to the station so the carriers can get them out to you. 
Oh, I know. But a lot of people say so many derogatory things about the Postal Service that I just try not to be like, hey, don't be saying that. You were a clerk for, for 20 years. So I started out as a clerk at our local office. Like many places, the bad employees are the ones that, that are noticed. Yeah, this is true. Um, I started out as a clerk at our local office. And then um, as I moved up, I went to the plant. And I'm currently on detail, um, which is an assignment with our local logistics department, our local headquarters logistics department. Um, but I will be leaving that in a couple of weeks. So. No, I'm a very proud postal worker. I just, like I said, I, I just don't want to get into the big debate on the postal service so i don't i don't advertise it but i mean if you're friends with me on facebook it's actually on my it's on my facebook that i where i work You were a loner for 15 years and traveled a lot. I bet you that's an interesting job. The other thing that happens is I, I get messages. Can you find my package? <laughs> that one's always fun. And most of the time, I'll be honest, I can because I can figure out, I can see where it went. But, you know. I understand not saying where you work because someone always has something to say. I worked at a car manufacturer for 30 years. Yeah, see, I mean, you know, people always, I mean, you know, I just try not to get into the politics of where I work, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> probably worked 25 or 30 years that's great yeah i have um i have, tw I have 12 thir i have 13 years in i still got another 12 to go i'm a late bloomer um when i started it was actually only going to be temporary um because i had just i was finishing up college um my psychology degree and I was going to change the world. Night, Mona. Thanks for hanging out. Um, but everywhere that I tried to apply at wanted all this experience. And um, nothing, nothing was going to pay me as good as where I was working. So I went to college for all those years and uh, 
ended up never leaving the post office, um, but it was just supposed to be a temporary job while I finished college. But I love my job. That's okay. We all come together when it comes to quilting. This is true. It's funny that, that Mona thought I was a nurse because, you know, my grandmother was a nurse, my stepmom's a nurse, two of my sisters are nurses. Um, but I almost went that direction. Almost. Um, but I just didn't end up going that way. I was more into the... Um, the psychology of the mental health aspect of things. Mine was supposed to be, so, so was mine. So was mine, Deborah. 20 hours a week. That's what I was told when I never been 20 hours a week. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, 20 hours a week, part time. It has never been 20 hours a week. Okay, so I absolutely love that this, because of how well the AccuQuilt is, and I don't know how well you can see this. Let me figure out what my camera is. It's just so perfect that there's no way I'm going to cut off my my tip because when I'm sewing, even if I'm off, I can just jump up and go around. There's no way I'm going to cut it off. This one's a little bit better at seeing it. So yeah, where they come together and this one's a little bit tighter on it. So I may have to move up a little bit just so that I don't cut off my, excuse me, cut off my corner. <clears throat> but it's, it's perfectly marked, so I mean. When I get there, I just move up a little bit and go back over. And then I don't cut off my points, I mean. You all have seen me up here trying to cut fabric while I'm talking, and <laughs> we all know that I'm not the most precise um, cutter ever. Um, So this AccuQuilt, I'm telling you, has just like changed my, changed my life. And we might actually get a block done on this live. Look at this. Never says I have an associate's degree in computer programming and never used it. Ah, see that that's always great. It's always helpful, you know. Sometimes, um, trust me. While I don't, while my job is not, um, 
in a, in a psychology field. I use my degree every day working with all the different personalities and all the different generations of people because um, at the plant we have people that have been working there 50 years to people that just started and this is their very first job. Um, so trust me when I say that while um, I trust me, I use my psychology degree every day. Well, not currently. Currently, I'm using my computer skills every day. But when I'm on the floor, I use my my degree every day. So see, I didn't I didn't lose a single point. I had to. This is one of those ones I had to move a little bit, but the point is still there. I didn't lose it. This one wasn't even close. And neither was that one. <clears throat> yeah, you meet some really great people. And because people tend to work um, work there for a long time, they're there for lifetimes. So I did... Um, I did starch all my fabric. And then of course I used my acorn pressing pin when I was making the um when I was doing <clears throat> the triangles. So it really helps flatten these seams. Um I think between the two it really makes these seams really lay flat. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my job, but I can't wait till I retire so that I can sew more. I'm just saying. And I don't know what is going on with my phone camera there. Let's see, why does that one look like that? Ooh, I almost creased that in the wrong spot. You know, I've I've hated them until the AccuQuilt. I'm just saying the AccuQuilt has I always hated them because I never cut them right. My husband made a joke the other day about this because some of my bear paws, the the I lost some of the corners. And he told me, he said, don't worry, it's okay. He just got it. he just got his toenails cut. I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> when I said, Yeah, I know, I cut some of the corners off. And he's like, That's all right. He just got his toenails cut. I thought that was really cute. Okay, I need to make sure that I pull this right. That one goes there. This one goes here. Then those two go together. I retired and started working at a started working at a quilt shop part time. I'm busier than when I worked. I bet you are. I bet you are. So So it was funny cuz my husband and I were talking. I was coming back from the quilt shops today and he said something about Bon Air having a quilt shop. And I said, did you watch my live last week? I actually brought that up that they didn't have a quilt shop. But I mean, it's, it's hot weather there. And I was like, well, you know, quilt shops don't just make quilts. They make wall hangings and quilts don't have to have batting that is super thick. And there's all different types of uh, thickness and weights and Quilts don't have to be heavy. I know that we usually end by now, but we're almost, we are almost, this block is almost done. So I'm going to finish this block up real quick before we go today.
We just have this seam and one other one to do, and then we are done. <clears throat> He's been talking a lot lately about opening up a quilt shop. Um, there's a place over by where we, um, where his brother has property that needs to be revitalized. And they've been talking about opening up shops there. To help revitalize that community. And one of the things we talked about was a quilt shop. I said, shoot, that's what Jenny Doan did. Okay, which way did I just press that? I pressed that that way. This one should press this way. Okay. But I think they're talking more of opening up not just a quilt shop, but some other shops to help revitalize um, a small town in Oklahoma. <clears throat> okay, now this should go perfect. Okay, so then we should be able to go like this and our seam should nest. Perfect. I love it when a plan comes together. Now, why is this piece taller than that piece? Scooch like that. Okay. We're going to pin down here so that I don't have to remove it. And then <clears throat> I'm going to pin over here. And then one more down here, just so it doesn't move on me. All right, last thing, guys. We are putting chicken bourbon, by the way. I think my gap is too far on that. I think I have a gap there. I don't think I nested it well enough. Huh? All right. Um, Team Ripper needs a divorce lawyer. We're going to pop. Two of those stitches and see if I can get this thing to do what I did on the last one. By golly, I think we did it, guys. Look at that. Look at that. We got it to spin right there. So that it, we have a perfectly flat center. And we finished our block. Ta -da! I can't believe we got that center. That's twice I did it. Twice. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> it's the little things. I'm just saying. All right, guys. We managed to finish a whole block in one sitting. And it wasn't like we were doing it from the get-go. We did other things before we started this. So I'm telling you, 
If I don't have to cut it before we start, we do good. All right, guys. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I so appreciate each and every one of you. Now, remember, we will not have a live for the next two weeks. Um, so I will not see you guys again until the first part of, we may do an impromptu when I get back. We'll see what we got going on. So until then, go out there, find some fabulous fabric, make some gorgeous quilts. Try not to spend too much time with that divorce lawyer. And I'll see you guys next time. You guys have a great week, week, two weeks. And I'll see you guys when I get back. Bye, everyone. Thanks for hanging out.